Welcome to Jenkins Boatworks. I am Chuck Jenkins and in this edition we're going to cut out the seats for the Haven 12 and a half and Chanted. Oh, I used to say no boat building video is complete without a picture of the sailing ship. Well, I'm still working on the seats. Um, and I went from a template that was 12 inches wide to trimming it down an inch. I went back to 11 inches. Um, and I think it looks better. We are about oh, 10 and a half, 10 and a quarter inches up there at the forward bulkhead. And uh, so anyway, I think my pattern is just about right. And so now I bought some lumber, um, two pieces. I was, I was debating on going with um, cedar because I found some beautiful cedar. And uh, one of my fellow boat builders said, well, why wouldn't you go with mahogany? And I had some mahogany, but it was, the pieces just weren't wide enough. And it was kind of wrecked. They were twisted. Anyway, I found this uh, Jatoba at the hardwood store, and the lumberman tells me that it's uh, kind of a variation of mahogany, and uh, poor man's teak is sometimes what they call it. And this board's just beautiful. Now this one here is about 14 inches wide, so it's more than I need, but oh my word, look at that. And then, they didn't have another one this size. Now this one is just a little bit better than 88 inches long, so it's it's the right length. So I went to Shooty Lumber down in Kansas City, and I found another piece, and that one is here. Now this one is really not quite as nice of a board, and it's got a warp to it, and I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that. It's got one good edge, which I currently have laying up against the fence, and then it's not the same width the whole way down. So up here on this end, it's about 11 and a half. And you may be able to see that twist. See that twist in it? And then at the other end, it's about 11 and a quarter. So I'm going to set my fence at 11 and a quarter and run this through here and take that edge off of there. Try to make sure that we've got a straight flat edge on both sides. And then... Um, Try to figure out what to do about the war. All right, more after a while. Okay, so I ran this through the table saw and I've got it down to where it's all 11 and a quarter wide. But you can still see we've got terrible warping on here and I haven't tried to do anything to it yet. One thing I notice on this end is that it's cupped. I think you can see it's making a smiley face at me. Okay, so I'm going to put a towel on here, a wet towel. So I've got a wet, warm, wet towel on here. I'm going to put that on there, and I'm heating up my wife's iron. And so I'll go get that here in a few minutes, and then we'll try to see if we can put some moisture back in this board. My understanding is that if it's cupped, if it's got a, a dip like that, it means that this side has dried out more than the back side. And that kind of makes sense. So if we can get a little bit of moisture back into it, maybe we can straighten it out some. That's what I'm hoping for. And we're going to have to do the exact same thing up on the other end except flip the board over. Because it's cupped the other way and that's why we've got this twist in it. I hope this works. I can't tell if we're getting anywhere or not. It still looks like we're warped to me. I've got it kind of clamped down here. I got some like one by eight or one by six underneath these. I got it clamped down to that. I'll probably bend those instead of this. I got this iron on here. A little bit of a cup on this side. I'm trying to straighten that out. I don't know, maybe it looks a little better. I suppose the next thing to do if this doesn't work will be to boil it in a bag. Uh, it's a trick Lou uh, from Tips with a Shipwright used where he just puts a plastic bag on it and 
wallpaper steamer or other source of steam right in the bag. And I think if I do that, uh, I could probably clamp it down on a flat surface and uh, likely get it flattened out. We'll see. This might work. Okay, so I got this board flattened out pretty good. It's still got a bit of a warp to it, but I think by the time I cut the pattern out, I uh, should be able to bend it however I want to at that point, I think. Um, so I laid the pattern down on here, and I'm starting to look at it, and I'm like, what drunken sailor cut this? You may remember when I spiled it, I was taking measurements at every frame, so that was about every seven and a quarter inches or so. But if you look at that curve going up there, I needed to either put more spiling marks in there, or learn how to use a jigsaw and cut straight. So I'm just not happy with it at all. You can, it's, it, it's just not a fair curve. All right, I've already put a batten on here and I think I can fix it. I'll put that back on here and then I'll take a little bit more video. Okay, so I got this batten on here. Doesn't that look better? Just a much more sweeping, smooth, edge on there. You can see how uneven it is. See that gap in there? It just it was terrible. It looks much better if you come and look from the other end down here too. That's going to be much better. We'll, um, we'll run a pencil line along there and take it off and look at it, but I think I'll be much happier with that. Okay. I'm nervous about cutting it out. That's an expensive piece of wood. I'm scared to death to take salt to it. But what's the worst thing that could happen? You have to go back to the lumber gear? <laughs> I think you can probably see this pencil line. I hope I can see it when I'm sawing. See how that goes up there? Just much more smooth, more fluid. looks way better. Well, there was a big gap in that one part there, and it's just a much nicer line. A batten can be a wonderful thing. All right. I had to glue little pieces on the end here because this piece that I bought was 86 and a quarter inch long, and it needs to be 88. So I've got two 7 eighths pieces glued and screwed into the ends. And those are actual mahogany, but um, the color is really close. And if it looks bad, I'll just put some trim over those very edges of the seats up on top of the cleats. So anyway, i got to let that glue set up. And that's a good excuse to not take the saw to it tonight. Maybe I'll be a little more rusted tomorrow. All right, see you later. in a fresh blade in this and uh, got the saw on its uh, fastest setting Well, we got it cut. The cut's not perfect. There's a couple places that clearly need to be sanded a little bit and maybe plain. Got it run a little spot right there. I don't know what happened. But I got it clamped together. So I took the piece that I cut off. This here came off of here. And then I just am clamping a straight edge together and uh, it gives me my whole whole seat and uh, 
It's still got a bit of a warp to it, but I think I'm going to leave it out here in the sun and see if uh, see if I can get it to calm down. And I'm really quite pleased with the way the seams matching up. May just be something we have to wind up running through the planer. So, well, all right, one more to go. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.